In 1865, Jules Verne described rocketing to the moon. In 1942, Isaac Asimov invented laws that would prevent robots from harming humans. In 1945, Arthur Clarke wrote about a communications satellite that would remain in a fixed position over the Earth. These authors all solved problems with ideas that once seemed outlandish, but now seem entirely reasonable. Their ingenious approaches make a particularly big impact on younger readers for a number of reasons. It's hard to be a kid. Sure, kids don't have to pay taxes, they don't have to deal with the condo association, but they often feel powerless, especially when faced with big problems. And I've seen this with middle and high school students who show up wearing clothes they didn't pick out for themselves, carrying lunches they didn't pack, and taking classes they didn't choose. Yet, many of the freshmen who walk into my classroom at Boston University, they may as well be on an alien planet. For the very first time, they're in charge of their food, study, and sleep habits. And they're confronting the notion that having agency is even more overwhelming than not having it. Science fiction is an antidote for all of these students. Now, the English teachers are listening, but for the other educators and parents out there, this is about you too. Science fiction is an entry into history, psychology, philosophy, religion, politics, economics, sociology, critical thinking, and of course, science. And reading science fiction deepens students' understanding of and interest in all of those topics. If you want to teach you know, politics or economics, have students study the governments formed in Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars or in Robert Heinlein's The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Have students analyze the financial ties between Earth, the Moon, and Mars. Show them futuristic examples of no taxation without representation or free trade. How cool is it to learn that stuff by reading about Earth's relationship with other worlds. Science fiction allows students a way to process difficult issues that they might otherwise be too shy or scared or overwhelmed to discuss. It is easier to talk about colonialism or war or racism through the lens of Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles or to talk about sexism and gender roles through the work of Ursula Le Guin or James Tiptree Jr. Science fiction explores what it means to be human, and that's relevant to everything. And this delights my students when they read the Martian Chronicles. They have vigorous debates about how the colonization experiment on Mars might have gone better. And they weigh the pros and cons of red tape on the red planet. They examine American exceptionalism and they celebrate Bradbury's portrayal of a highly evolved Martian culture, often adopting the expression, this thing is good. At first, they might not realize just how much those conversations and ideas apply to the real world, and that may be what frees them up to have them in the first place. Ray Bradbury notes that science fiction is an attempt to solve problems by pretending to look the other way. He likens reading science fiction to Perseus slaying Medusa by looking at her reflection in his shield as he cut off her head. That indirection allows science fiction to provide a safe context for asking questions, brainstorming, and for real world problem solving. Intel commission science fiction writers to brainstorm applications for existing technologies. And NASA invites science fiction writers to conceptualize interstellar travel and to imagine life on other planets. That's because they know science fiction frequently becomes science fact. It makes the fantastical literal. And students who read science fiction not only gravitate towards STEM fields, but they also undergo shifts in their own thinking 
as they narrow the gap between the seemingly impossible and the possible. Well, science fiction constantly provokes that question, could this really happen? Could we colonize Mars? Could we make robots that think? Could we replicate matter? And students who've grown up with smart technology and iPads and robots, they know the answer to that question is rarely no. Reality has demonstrated what science fiction has been saying all along, which is that virtually nothing is impossible and that intelligence and imagination are the most powerful tools we have. Science fiction harnesses both by prompting readers to ask, what if this happened? What if we colonized Mars? What if we made robots that think? What if we replicated matter? Science fiction invites readers to think about the future based on what they already understand about the past and the present. Arthur Clarke once said that science fiction seldom tries to predict the future, that more often than not, science fiction tries to prevent the future. Ray Bradbury warns us that a Mars colonization project might be doomed by humans' desire to bend reality and environments to our will, rather than to adjust ourselves to them. Arthur Clarke, warns us that thinking robots might try to kill us. Asimov disagrees. Cory Doctorow suggests that replicating matter could lead to war, but on Star Trek it looks pretty cool. The genre's thought experiments underscore that nothing is set in stone, and it invites students to think about the future they want to create and the future they hope to avoid. Science fiction is also about ethics, which brings us to the genre's next question. Should this happen? Should we colonize Mars? Should we make robots that think? Should we replicate matter? Now students are thinking about consequences. Ever since 1818, when Mary Shelley wrote a story about a man who wanted to make history by creating life, science fiction has warned readers that humans tend to leap before they look. One of sci-fi's overarching morals is that lack of foresight could destroy the human race, and careful consideration of the future could save it. Science fiction explores the consequences of human choices, particularly around technology, in order to get readers thinking about the implications of real-world actions. Science fiction also demonstrates that those who think carefully about the future are best prepared to guide it. The younger generation not only reads science fiction, they also star in science fiction. They not only see Medusa in that shield, they also see themselves. In both science fiction and the real world, students can come up with solutions to problems that adults can't. And that's because they haven't been conditioned by or resigned to the flawed ways of the world. The human brain doesn't reach maturity until one's early 20s which means that teenagers are still figuring out how to process information. Science fiction reinforces a relationship between what an adolescent thinks and how an adolescent thinks. And students learn vicariously through their sci-fi counterparts, and the experiences of those characters influence students' thinking and their worldviews. Instead of thinking, well, that's just how the world works, or life isn't fair, children in science fiction catalyze change. Think of Katniss Everdeen, who brings down the vicious totalitarian regime in the Hunger Games. Think of Fahrenheit 451's child idealist Clarice McClellan, 
who causes fireman Guy Montag to question burning books. Think of a wrinkle in time's Meg Murray and her little brother, Charles Wallace, who travel the universe by folding time and space. Think of Jonas from the dystopian story, The Giver, who risks his life to find elsewhere, a land of possibility. Think of the little prince, born on an asteroid, or Harry Potter and Alice in Wonderland, both of whom knew that there was more to life than what they'd been told and what they could see. All of these characters rewrite the rules. Perhaps more importantly, these characters also inspire students to believe that the world can be a better place. And when that happens in class, students look around and they see others invested in that idea. And when that happens, students are bolstered by the possibilities of what a like-minded community can achieve. Students demonstrated that ability decades ago when they began reading science fiction in the first place. Ray Bradbury describes this phenomenon. The children, hungry for ideas, struck out on their own. And after they found science fiction, they came back into classrooms and they placed a, a gentle bomb on a teacher's desk. Instead of an apple, it was Asimov. What's that, the teacher said suspiciously. Try it, it's good for you, the student said. Students have always reached for science fiction, perhaps at first for the escapism and the excitement, but also because it tells them they can save the world, and then it shows them how. In a time uh, when the real world can seem frighteningly similar to a science fiction dystopia, Students need to start thinking about how to solve big problems, and they need to believe they can do it. How better to encourage that than by reading and incorporating into classrooms Fahrenheit 451 or The Hunger Games? While being entertained, students absorb the message that they can save their district, or maybe even the world, from corrupt governments and dangerous ideologies. One of my students recently wrote a paper about the role of children in science fiction, and she analyzed a few different stories and then connected them back to the real world. And here's how she ended that paper. No matter how flawed the society, there is always hope on the horizon. The next generation, the rebuilders. And that, she wrote, is me. It's us. And she's right. Armed with stories of robots, aliens, and distant galaxies, the younger generation can slay the Medusas that threaten the future. Thank you.